Good morning. Thanks for being here for our meeting today. As I shared in our email reminder, we have a peer review case to hear, discuss, and evaluate this morning. This involves RN Mary Douglas and an event regarding a patient, Alice, who has type 1 diabetes. Let me remind you that our role as a peer review committee is quality, nursing care, safety, and nurse advocacy. We have some new members, so I'll review a few facts about our role. The peer review mechanism is required under the Texas Nurse Practice Act. This is an internal committee for UTMB nursing to help determine actions to be taken regarding the case. If the case is reportable to the Board of Nursing, a report is prepared and sent to the board and the CNO is made aware. I'd like for you to review the written details of the case. Mary will join us at 8.30 after we have read about the event. Mary will discuss the case events and we may ask her questions. Mary received information that she can bring a support RN to accompany her in the meeting. Mary's department nurse educator, Lynn Bell, will join us for the meeting at Mary's request. I want to share with you a new form. We will use this in our review of peer review cases. This form works for both incident-based peer review or safe harbor-based peer review and is a brief synopsis of each standard and the board's mandatory reporting events. This form helps us identify the standards that are breached and what additional actions to suggest for remedial education or precepted support in a performance improvement plan. Any actions taken are part of a performance improvement plan and developed by the manager in coordination with human resources. This committee may make suggestions to the manager. We may also refer system-wide issues to appropriate nursing, quality, or safety committees. Any events that meet requirements for mandatory reporting will be reported to the Board of Nursing and the CNO. So let's each review the case before Mary joins us. Good morning, Mary and Lynn. It's nice to have you here this morning. Let's do some quick introductions so we all know each other. Janet, would you start? I'm Janet Sandridge. I'm with the WIC department. I'm John Snyder. I work on the ACE unit, Tennessee. I'm Lynn Bell, and I'm the med surge educator. I'm Maria Dumont. I work in TDC, day surgery unit. I'm Jerry Hyatt. I work in the emergency department. I work in 8C. General surgery. Mary, can you start by telling us a little bit about your background, your nursing experience, and then tell us in your own words what happened with Alice Smith, your diabetic patient? Hi, um, I'm Mary Douglas. Uh, I have my BSN in uh, nursing. Um, I've worked at the hospital for eight years, um, five of which have been actually on the med surge unit itself. Um, all of my experience is in med surgical nursing. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm not yet certified, but I am taking my exam to take the test pretty soon. Mary, can you tell us about Alice, the diabetes patient you cared for? Okay. Um, I took care of Alice um, for several nights um, a few weeks ago when she was here on her previous admission. Um, I knew her pretty well. Um, she was young, um, reliable. She had always managed her diabetes um, fairly well. Um, <coughs> I'd been off for a couple days. And then when I returned back to work on Thursday night, um, I had taken care of her again. She was my patient. Um, I got a quick report on her and what her blood sugars had been. Um, at 10 o'clock, it was 128. Um, and um, she had been giving her own insulin. So uh, she, that night, she got two units of Humalog and eight units of Lantus. Um, when it, I saw her again at 4.15, I went to check on her. Um, she seemed okay. Um, her respirations were good. She was resting. I knew that she had not been um, getting very much sleep, so I decided to go ahead and let her sleep. Um, she seemed okay. 
Um, at 6.15, the PCT went to check on her again, and um, we couldn't wake her up. So I immediately called the doctor. I immediately called the rapid response team. We got her stabilized, and we transferred her to the ICU. After that, I called her family to give um, them an update. Um, you know, Alice had always been, you know, taking care of her own blood sugars, and um, I thought she was okay. I did not see her as that sick. Thank you, Mary. Do members of the committee have questions for Mary? Uh, what did you learn about Alice? Did you know about the 10 p.m. dose of insulin? Uh, when I got reported at 10 o'clock, I knew that her blood sugars were a little high. Yes, I knew about her dose of insulin. I had actually helped her with that. Um, she was tolerating it all well last week. Um, you know, she had checked her own blood sugars all the time, but it was not unusual for her to get the amount of insulin that she got for that night. Mary, have you been educated and uh, oriented on managing the diabetic patients that are commonly admitted to your unit? Um, yes, I know all about um, diabetes management and different kinds of insulin. Um, I've attended all different kinds of in-services. Um, I even attended an in-service when the new um, insulin pins came out. Um, I read and know about diabetes management. It's nothing unusual for you know my part of nursing care. I want to share something. Mary is a good nurse. When she was hired, she completed the CBO tools, and as you know, that includes diabetes management. I personally have given several diabetes in services every year, and Mary is always there. I keep the sign-in sheets, they're in my office, and her name is on all of those sign-in sheets. And I don't know of any previous care incident. Mary, what had been Alice's blood sugar levels earlier in the day? Well, I remember that um, looking back at her blood sugars, um, her highest level was 196. Her lowest was had been 88. Um, at 10 p.m., it was 128, which was really good for her. Not too high, not too low. Mary, were you clear about the orders for Alice to check her blood sugars every four hours? Yeah, I thought she would check her blood sugars as she normally did. Um, she'd done them on previous admissions. She was really good at checking her own sugar, so I thought she would just go ahead and do that. Um, when I went to see her, you know, at 4 a.m., she was resting well. I knew she hadn't been sleeping very well during this admission, so I was just going to let her rest. Um, you know, nothing got, nothing was unusual in that night. Um, we were as busy as we normally are, um, but like I said, I just didn't see her as that sick. Was there something going on that got in the way of you checking her blood sugar? No, nothing specific got in the way. We were just as you know busy as we normally were, and like I said, um, I thought she would check her own blood sugars. Mary, was it usual practice to let patients sleep through a blood sugar check? Rarely, no. Um, routinely, we would check their blood sugars, but um, I just wanted to let her rest. I knew she had been sleeping. How was the staffing uh, that night, Mary? and uh, do you think that played a role? Uh, we had the usual staffing that we have um, on our unit. We had three RNs and one PCT. Um, it was, you know, a routine night for us. Um, it wasn't as busy as it usually is, um, but I don't think that staffing played a role in this incident. Do you feel that monitoring the blood sugar it was within the scope of your practice? Yes, monitoring blood sugar is something that I routinely do. Mary, did you consider about all the factors all together? That is, that is, it was nighttime, the blood sugar was fluctuating, the patient had not been eating, it was, um, she had come from surgery, and did those events require for frequent observation? Yes, I know all about those signs. Um, I was just so used to Alice managing her own blood sugar checks and her own care that I just didn't see her as needing that extra um, observation. Um, I just wanted to let her rest. She was so tired. Uh, I feel so badly that I let my patient down. I've never been involved in an incident like this before. Mary, this incident caused significant harm to the patient. I know you're aware of that. And because it's a serious event, it does have to be reported to the Board of Nursing. Uh, the committee will take a look at all of the findings, at all of the information you've provided for us today, and we'll be back in touch with you and your manager, the director, and of course the CNO will be involved as well. Uh, we appreciate your time and we thank you for coming to talk to us. Is there anything else you want to share? 
Uh, yes, I'd like to say something else. I, I just want to let you all know that I'm so sorry that this happened to Alice. I've thought about her constantly since this happened. I feel like I've betrayed um, her trust, not only in me, but in this hospital. And I want to say again, I'm very sorry. So this is an example of what happens in the peer review committee. The group is compassionate, professional and tries to make the nurse as comfortable as possible throughout this important process. The committee further discusses and prepares recommendations and findings for the employee, manager, director, and the CNO. The peer review committee has a responsibility to report to the Board of Nursing any reportable event. The CNO also has a reporting responsibility with the Board of Nursing. Internal UTMB actions will be proposed and would likely include suspension during the investigation period, remedial education, and depending upon the nurse's responses, could result in termination. In this case, it is clear that Mary did not follow several standards of practice, including Standard A, conforming to the Nurse Practice Act, Standard B, failure to implement a safe environment, and standard M, failure to provide interventions to avoid complications. She also failed to follow the RN-specific nursing process steps. The performance improvement plan that's developed by management would include steps to address each of those standards. This event and action plan would be reported to the Board of Nursing by the Peer Review Committee and the CNO, as this resulted in patient harm. Peer review is a mechanism to protect and assure safe patient care and to advocate for the best actions taken with the RN to assure ongoing safe care. The goal is excellence in patient-centered safe care and professional nursing practice.